I've played way too much Tears of the Kingdom since last Thursday. I've built all sorts of contraptions, killed hundreds of enemies, did loads of side quests, completed a dungeon, and I've done about 50 shrines. Following up on Breath of the Wild was going to be a monumental task, and I'm so happy to say that the developers did the impossible. So far, this game is better than Breath of the Wild in pretty much every single way. The new powers make it into a genuinely open sandbox, the side quests are much improved and the story is significantly more engaged. To start this video, we'll have to talk about the famous term, emergent gameplay. Breath of the Wild was already pretty good at this, where I'd trade some stories with friends on how I did something or how I found a quest, but Tears of the Kingdom whipped out its log and slapped it all over Breath of the Wild's face. This is the most fun I've ever had in a sandbox open world game, and I typically don't like these very sandboxy games. I usually prefer a set of rules like Skyrim, but this game just gives you so much at your disposal that if you can think it, you can do it. And it's so simple, but the outcome is just amazing. At one point, I had to climb a mountain. I first tried to build a floating raft with fans, but after 15 minutes, I couldn't get it to work. I then figured out that all the components I had could build a bridge to let me climb. All the while, I could have just turned around, walked into a cave, and gone up the mountain that way. And the game is filled with moments like this. This is where the cave leads us. <laughs> I was up there. <laughs> There are seemingly infinite ways to interact with the world, and it makes exploring the world and puzzles a lot more fun because there are just so many ways to do it. There's clearly an intended way to beat a puzzle, but I'm almost certain I've never actually done them that way. I've completed about 50 shrines, and each one I've built stuff that I probably shouldn't have, and somehow still beat the shrine. And to me, the Ultra Hand and Recall ability both let you do the things that we saw speedrunners do in Breath of the Wild with all these mad tricks. It seems to me like Nintendo saw all these fun videos and decided, well, you don't have to like press loads of different menus and do this and do that. Instead, we'll just build the tools and give it to us so that your average player can do all these fun stuff. One major difference is that the world actually feels lived in. Yeah, it's still vast, it's empty, and still gives off that very tranquil feeling that Breath of the Wild did. But when you reach the towns and stables, NPCs actually have stories rather than just, oh, find me some butter or some crap like that. I found myself going out of my way to do the side quests as they came up, rather than just saving them all for once when I was bored in the post-game of Breath of the Wild. It's great to see how Hyrule has evolved since Breath of the Wild as well. The Hylians and other races have started to build different towns and expand, and even the enemies have built more elaborate bases which I love to see. Sitting around a campfire, in a skull-shaped rock, and then a treehouse kind of things, and all of them return in Tears of the Kingdom, but they're a lot more varied. There's also things like packs of bokoblins roaming with a new boss style enemy that have rallying cries that will call their friends back to defend them. And I can't forget the new mob types like horriblins and constructs that make a way more varied combat system. And that's without mentioning my new favourite thing in this game, and that's the fuse ability. And Jesus Christ is this so much fun. If you see two things, you can almost always fuse. If you have a stick and see a massive metal door, fuse it to make a paddle that sends air flying at the enemies knocking them over. If you see a spiky ball, fuse that with any weapon to increase the power dramatically. And you can even fuse things to shields like sleds or springs that can be used outside of combat. It's so much fun making random crap, and it also makes the weapon durability less of a problem, because when you craft a super powerful weapon, I feel that weapon at some point has to break, because you'd just be way too powerful for the rest of the game. And then just like Breath of the Wild, it also forces you to experiment with new weapons. But with the new fusion system, there are just so many ways to experiment with this combat system, and the weapon durability actually helps it in this case, I think. Now, my favourite use of the fusion ability is all about the arrows. You can make typical Zelda arrows like ice, fire and lightning, but you can also attach, say, an eyeball and make it homing, or even a muddled bud that causes enemies to attack one another. A lot of my time has been taken up just by seeing what fusions work well with one another, and it's simply staggering how much fun it is. Now, before I made this video, I wanted to beat at least one dungeon to see if they're improved over the Divine Beasts in Breath of the Wild. And I just beat the Wind Temple there, and it's somewhat better, but not the leap that I was hoping for. I won't show any footage just to avoid spoilers, but as I said, I did the Wind Temple, and I had fun, but it was very short, and it didn't give off the Zelda dungeon vibes that I was hoping it would. It needed to be bigger with tougher puzzles. I literally beat it in about like 20 or 30 minutes. What I will say, however, is that the boss fight was way more interesting than anything in the Divine Beast bosses. So they're an improvement, but not a massive one. Obviously, I left out two parts of Tears of the Kingdom to save to the end, and they are the Sky Islands and the Depths. And outside of the new tools, these are the biggest addition to the game. The Sky Islands are simply just 
good. The opening island, which is the Grey Plateau of this game, did exactly what the Grey Plateau did six years ago. But if anything, it's more impressive because we don't have the surprise factor anymore. We've been there, we've done that, and we've worn the t-shirt, but somehow they managed to create a sense of wonder and discovery all over again with the new powers and enemies on the Sky Islands. However, once you get off the first island, I almost forgot about the Sky part of the game. The islands are very few and far between, and honestly, I wish more of Hyrule was ripped up into the sky so they could have done more interesting stuff with the pre-existing map. However, it's the complete opposite for the depths. I can't believe that they kept this secret, and I didn't even know what I was getting into, but it's easily one of the creepiest parts of a Zelda game I've ever experienced. I genuinely thought this was just going to be a series of caves, but I was so wrong. It's a whole new map underground, and how you explore it is so much different to anything else in the game. Above ground, I always felt like I was in control. It's easy to run or glide away from danger, but in the depths, it's pitch black, and you have to use bright bloom to light your way like a cave in Minecraft, which really helps making it feel tense and dangerous. After that, the enemies are a lot harder, and of course, there's gloom everywhere, which zaps your health. Once again, it created that what's around this corner feeling, but there was also a level of trepidation where I was afraid to find out because it's that creepy. Honestly, the only thing from the Zelda games that rivals this are the zombies in the market town in Ocarina of Time, because they haunted me when I was a child. The Sky Island's been so heavily featured in their pre-release coverage left me disappointed because of how small a role it plays so far, but at the very least, the newness of the depths made up for it in some sense. Honestly, Breath of the Wild never even came close to dethroning Majora's Mask as my favourite game of all time, but if Tears of the Kingdom keeps going the way it does, it's definitely in there for a chance, and it's going to be the first game that I can remember for a long time that has even had a chance of taking over Majora's Mask. So we'll have to wait and see until I beat the game. And then I want to sit on it for a bit before I even make that decision. So I really appreciate you watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I have a few exciting reviews coming next week. So stick around for them. Join the Discord down below. See you all on the next video. Goodbye.